Once the thing is on, I'm treating it like a bomb because that's the easiest way to like. And therefore, if you lose a couple guys to a bomb, it's fine. <laughs> I don't want everybody. I don't want to lose the hopeful two. I'm here in Dallas at the Rev Robotics warehouse to build a BattleBot. Switchback was accepted to compete in BattleBots at the end of August in Las Vegas. And we only have about six weeks to go from a CAD drawing to a fully functional 250 pound combat robot. And right now, we only have a pile of parts. All right, so we got our parts from Sand Cut Send. We got aluminum parts the other day, so that'll be good for wheels and molding. This should be the frame parts. They were all laser cut. They're all based on a flat pattern that just gets cut out in a profile out of a big sheet. A lot of them have notches and tabs that all interlock with each other. Once we tab them all together, we weld them up and everything is just a really good fit right out of the packaging. So this is the base, this is the bottom. These are the wheel wells. This is essentially just an access area. These are the actual bolt heads. Ooh, there Perfect. we go. So the plan is to take this together, tack weld it all together, check validate measurements, put it in the preheat oven, bring the metal up to temperature, and then we'll go through and do the, the completion welds. Here we go. Let's do it. We use aluminum because it's great and easy to machine and it's really lightweight for its size, for things like motor mounts and gearbox plates and things that don't take big hits. When aluminum get, takes a big hit, it does absorb a really decent amount of energy, but it tends to chunk apart and it makes repairability a lot harder. So for the frame and the armor of Switchback, we use AR500 steel, which is abrasion resistance and really strong. And when this gets hit, it tends energy will glance off of it, or if it does absorb the impact, it'll either dent or bend, which is much easier to repair in the pits. But in order to get a good weld, we have to preheat to 200 degrees. It's important to design your robot for the oven that you have. I've been told that maybe I can get to do some welding today. So we decided that we wanted to do custom wheels for Switchback so that we have the ability to try different durometers as we're not sure what the arena floor is gonna be like. We laser cut all these little parts um, with little interlocks and then made custom molds. So the main, the main thing I will say is that when you spray the mold release, anything it touches will not mold onto. Yeah, I know. Shake well before using. No, I'm not doing this for camera. <laughs> never seen someone shake a can so high. Like, I don't want to go down to the table because, like, <laughs> like, like, I do this and it's bad. And I do this and it's bad. And like, I'm trying to like stay in this like, like, you know that it's like. <laughs> I'm over here. That video is like the best thing that you've shot. Okay. I mean, I think that just means that we got to get better video than that. <laughs> Cause otherwise that's what I'm going with. Brush. That's good. Stop. That is very orange. Real quick, before you keep watching, I need to tell you I had to remove a ton of interesting parts of this video for it to work with the YouTube algorithm. And I have to do it pretty much every time, and it drives me nuts. If you'd like to see the extended version of this video that includes everything that I think is interesting, you can head to my streaming platform, Nebula. Nebula is a streaming platform made by creators for creators. It's gonna allow me to experiment with different kinds of content without having to worry about finding sponsors, appeasing the algorithm, or getting demonetized. And best of all, there are no ads. We have some of the best educational content creators on Nebula that you already know and love, like Real Engineering, Wendover Productions, Half is Interesting, and Real Life Lore. But if that's not awesome enough, the best and cheapest way to get access to Nebula is through this incredible bundle we've put together with CuriosityStream for only $14.79 a year. 
You'll get access to thousands of award-winning documentaries on CuriosityStream. Everything from Edward Snowden, to China, to manufacturing and nanotechnology, to the incredible David Attenborough. And you'll get Nebula bundled in for free. It's not a trial. You'll have it for as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. It really is the best deal in streaming right now. It's a great way to support my channel and so many other amazing creators. So click the link in the description or go to the URL. Clicking that link really helps my channel as I get started making videos again here. Thank you. So when Orion and I designed the, the worm gearbox, and it's something we've never done before, we didn't have to design the actual gears, um, but the, the center to center distance, like where the gears mate and how they interact is something we've never really worked with before. So one of the big things we're trying to get done this weekend is uh, testing that, that assembly. <laughs> So why are we machining things that were already cut with the laser? Well, the laser can only cut essentially in two dimensions. So this is an example of a part straight off the laser. And sometimes we need things that are much more complex. This has had clearance milled out here. Uh, it's had holes drilled from the side that were tapped. Uh, and then this bearing was pressed in. And this is all to make assemblies like this. This is the gearbox to raise and lower the arm. It's been 16 hours. We're now taking these apart to check on the first batch of wheels. Oh. Man, that actually worked we way better. better. <laughs> that worked way better than I thought. Okay. That is a solid wheel right there. We decided to use brushless motors in Switchback. They're way more efficient for the given weight as opposed to the older school brushed motors, but they're way more complicated to control. In a brushed motor, you pretty much just give it power and it spins. You control the amount of current and that controls the speed and the strength of the motor. However, for brushless motors, this controller has to alternately energize different coils of wire every revolution of the motor. So it has to be really tightly coupled with the position and speed of the motor. And if you screw that up, all hell can break loose. Every bit of weight we save on the motors, we can put towards armor and weapons, but there's a lot of opportunity for things to go wrong and leave us completely dead in the water. So this is the first time we're gonna try and spin up one of our drive motors. I got some green lights on the screen. That's a good, good sign. Now we're gonna do the flux linkages. No spin. What's concerning me is we're not hearing any squeal. Uh, yeah, even... So this is the inside of the motor controller and we open it up after the, a loud pop. The gate driver has a crater in it and then underneath this thermal pad, which is now nice and charred, the, these are the, the H bridges. Basically some copper vaporized, they started desoldering themselves. It's dead, dead. Make sure our connectors are good. They came from the factory with tinned wires. We cut off the tinned wires, put our own connectors. These are the winding wires, which have an epoxy coating. Oh, you need the solder pot. Yeah, this is, that's what they do at the factory. So, so the winding wires, when they wind the motors, right, they are uh, coated wires, wires, right? Because they, they, so they can't touch each other, right? right. We'll the individual the wraps. So, so when you put a connector on the end, you have to burn or heat off the actual coating to make a connection. Otherwise you're like, your wires are not connected. So they cut those off to put crimps on them. The crimp was going to the outside of the winding wire. And, and so then it was like making connection with like almost nothing. So your resistance went to like infinite and it was essentially a dead short until they bumped up the current and then they fried the chip. Okay, so after we fixed the uh, motor wire problem by tinning the wires, we're hoping that this makes a better connection. So the sensor cable, motor wires, Going to run the test. Sweet. Let's just go straight to controlling it with a the radio. There we go. I've heard we're just about ready to put the robot together for the first time. Yes, yeah. We're ready to start working on chain. Ready to get greasy. Extremely dirty. That's getting a little heavy. My 
hands off, everybody. Full speed 100. Yeah, just do it. Just go for it. That actually sounds really good. Yeah. Okay. Let's put the belly pan back on. Whip turns are going to be so easy. That is so cool. It is so fast. Was that 100%? That was 100. Those look okay. We should pass this around a little bit out here before we destroy it. This motor. Yeah, something, something's up with that side. So we've lost drive on one half of the robot, one side. And don't really know why right now. It drove for like two and it drove well. Yeah, it was, it was That's almost a whole battle bus, man. All right, let's call it a day. First step. I think would just be to get this running again. Okay, it's doing the pulsing it was doing out there. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. I'm going to swap, I'm just gonna move the connections over from the good motor, the good side, to the bad sides. So now it's not running at all. Looks like we burned an ESC. Um, these are about a hundred bucks each. Feels like it's gonna be an expensive problem to fix. Trash. We'll replace it and move on again. Now we're gonna focus on putting the arm together. Let's explain this. So this, this is, is kind of a the critical... gearbox for the arm. It uses a worm gear in order to turn this chain mechanism into these compliant couplers. Um, okay. that... so this then fits in here? Yep. Like and there's another shaft that gets attached to okay. that. Yep. That shaft passes through this hole right here to another chain, and then that's what we're using to move... Articulate the arm up and down. The whole arm, yeah. This is the one where like, we have the most nerves about working, right? Like spinning a blade really fast, that's not that complicated. The drivetrain's not that complicated. With this, moving the arm that's fully loaded, that the dynamics, great. that's where all the complication is. And that's that's also where like, all the, the doubters are saying, what are you guys <laughs> doing? So we're gonna learn really quickly if they're right or we're right. I am doing just kind of a dry fit of all the weapon components. So I'm putting all the plates together and I'm gonna put some screws in the top and try to lock the whole assembly down. How much does this thing weigh? 80 pounds. And that, spinning at 10,000 RPM. That's gonna be crazy. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get hit by that. Oh. <laughs> that's heavy. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's that's gonna do some damage. Oh, no, that's bloody good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Done. Well, the real question is, is that like so switch back kind of like it's family. Yeah, it's it's a very weird thing that I think like people don't understand is that we're not building a single robot. We're building two or three robots that all look the same. Correct. Every one of the best BattleBots teams has multiple robots in their pits. So when you see it in the box, you don't actually know which one it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got slimed. <laughs> All of a sudden, it looks like switchback. Ah, looks like a robot. Oh, and it can spin now. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Too much. We need to now make it a point that like nobody's moving this by themselves anymore, right? It is far too heavy, sharp, and dangerous. Like, do we want to like back up and just like make it rotate slow, just to like make sure that stuff actually spins? 
Everybody who doesn't need to be anywhere close, we are going to back way up from this. We will control it over radio, but I want to limit it to like literally like 1%. Right. We are about to test the weapon. So we are all ducking behind this polycarbonate barrier. So I'm going to turn on the arm. That's good. Right there, right there, right there. Weapon on. All right, Frank, Frank. Frank, come this way, Come, right? come this way, behind come the... This way. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to literally just, just throttle up until it barely starts spinning. Yeah. And just leave the throttle right where it is. Yeah. And then just, and then we're gonna shut it down. That's 1%, 2, 3, 10, 11, 12, 13. Nice. There it goes. Okay. All right, you can go a little bit higher than that. Okay. Nice. 14. 15? Oh, that's already terrifying. This is 15%, yeah. and, and these motors are actually throttled at 50% because they're the wrong KV. Do we want to go a little bit faster in here while it's stationary, or do we want to just go immediately mm -hmm. outside? I think we should go outside. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go outside. Let's go outside. I'll see you all just on the stay. other side. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Why did they get to go up there? And these two poor suckers have to stand down here. Because these guys have to turn it on. <laughs> but how is it safer for them? Because until he, he turns on the radio over there, it's dead killed. It won't move here. But it's unsafe for them, but safe for these two guys. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just making sure I I'm understand. Just, I'm just trying to like, once the thing is on, I'm treating it like a bomb because that's the easiest way to like... And therefore, if you lose a couple guys to a bomb, it's fine. <laughs> I don't, don't want everybody. I don't want to lose the whole platoon. Right. Okay. Phil, ready? Arm on. Okay, that's stop. Stop. Weapon on. Parker, we are logging. All right, we're all enabled. 10, 20. Holy smokes. 90, 100. Yeah, what's the current limit right now? 80. Yeah, maybe 80. 80. That's, that's not spinning honestly, very fast. Honestly, we spin it down. way slower than I yeah. Can I go configure that to be 80? Disabled higher than 80. Go to 120. Okay. We were only at 20 amp. That explains so much. <laughs> 30. 40. Okay, now. Oh, there okay, we go. Yeah. There we go. 50. <laughs> yep, no, that's scary. 60. Yeah. That's what we're 70. talking about. Oh, that's terrifying. 80. <laughs> 90. 100. <laughs> Sketchy. Uh, something is rattling out. Yeah, let's, 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 let's shut it down. Let's go to 50%. Okay. And then we can just move the arm just like within like a 10 degree span. Okay, arm down. Arm up. Okay, crank the speed up. Something just happened. Just stop. Kill it. Let's make it safe. Something, Disabled. something's not right. This motor control is a bit warm. So yeah, it's these hot. are toasty. All right. Well, that was sufficiently that was awesome. scaring. Scaring. But uh, that worked. We did it. We have successfully competed on BattleBots. Everyone. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Ready? It's round round. Hey! Well, <laughs> we got it spinning. We have, what, wow. a month left? Just about a month. Just about a month to, to build two fully functional. Fix all the issues with this one, finish the system integration, and build two more from scratch. Good luck. <laughs> I'm headed back to New Mexico, so I'll see you all in Vegas. <laughs> this video was shot last summer, but only came out now because I had to recover from my head injury first before I could edit it. We competed with Switchback in Vegas last August and ended up going one and two. You can watch those fights on Discovery Plus and there's a bonus fight that's available that's free to watch on YouTube. I'll put links to all of those down in the description. Switchback also fought in BattleBots Champions. Our fight is airing this Thursday, August 25th on Discovery, so be sure not to miss that. And if you'd like to follow the Switchback team, you can find the team pages on Facebook and Instagram. Links are again down in the description. In the meantime, I'm putting the finishing touches on my new shop here in Colorado and diving into some exciting new projects. I'll see you again soon.